pouvoir partager un moment de musique avec vous. Merci. It's uh, good to be sharing Et pour moment vous dire en toute confidence, with me. cette année, honestly, this year, nous étions presque à trois. On était there was presque nearly three people. à trois avec un violon rock. Non seulement les guitares, la batterie, mais un violon rock. Vous ne savez prob probablement pas, mais Axel Lemaire... You probably doesn't know, but uh, Axel actually is a violon. He's actually a violin player. I want to offer, if you had more time, she was uh, ready to work with us on stage. We shall see next year, maybe. Without further ado, it's a word of introduction with Axel Lemaire. Well, I said yes, but they wouldn't let me play the violin for, for some reason. I had. I'm going to speak 60 minutes for 15 uh, minute drive, and there's only one company in the world I would do this is to say my level in trust and pride, and it is OVH. Oles Van Herman, with a alias like this, he could have been a rock star or a famous DJ, and he preferred being the guru of a French giant of tech. And the secret to this behind all this recipe is that of we are hosting you, on vous héberge, is together. The slogan, the collective of a company like OVH, and what's of prime importance, and you are the proof of that, OVH is actually an ecosystem, and the key to success for French innovation and world innovation is there in the ecosystem and innovation open. Thank you, OVH. Thank you, Axel. It's crazy. What a pleasure to be here. I mean, more than 2,500 people in this room, and it's more than 5,000 clients, partners, resellers that we've met in the World Tour and the various meetings we organize in the world. But why is it important? Well, because OVH is first and foremost built around uh, its clients and partners. So we, this is why I would like to we like to understand uh, your uh, requirements. And the best thing to do that is to spend time together, present some new products and integrate your feedback. So this year, we're going to ask you to use your smartphone, and we're going to ask you if you please get out your smartphone, and we're going to test out the link on the screen, live.e.com slash OVH Summit. We're going to test it out, so get your smartphones out, and you'll be able to use it during the keynote. Are you all ready? Well, we're going to start with an extremely complicated question. So, did you hear the number we play with Octave? So, which group did all play this number? Justin Bieber, Céline Dion, or ACDC? So, I'd let, I give you 10 seconds to answer. So we have some Justin Bieber fans here, we know that. I mean, Céline Dion, of course, but the right answer? Well, not a lot of answers. Well, a CDC, yes. Of course, there was some doubt. You found the group. <laughs> That's good. Let's go back to the core of our discussion. You. Clients, partners, resellers, and also you in this room who are discovering OVH today and are going to become our clients, welcome. You are all very different from one, one from another, very different, and this is the strength of OVH. Be able to deliver services to small companies or larger companies alike, those who buy products via OVH.com or others through integrators or resellers, those who come to get some telecom products and others who come for cloud products. Welcome also to our partner clients who use their own sales force to sell our products to their clients, so which is a multiplier effect. It is the case for Rogers, who is a telecom leader in Canada, with whom we signed a strategic partnership. Let us listen to the CEO, Nitin Kawan. Bonjour à tous. 
Je suis ravi de prendre part à la OVH Sumi aujourd'hui. We are Canada's largest communications provider, and we are focused on delivering products and solutions that will improve productivity and drive more digital innovation in Canadian businesses. We all know that businesses worldwide are producing and consuming more data than ever before, and that many IT teams are struggling to keep up with the demand. Given these challenges, we wanted to make it easier for Canadian businesses to adopt cloud solutions. So last year, we partnered with OVH, the European leader in cloud technologies, to launch Rogers Public Cloud. It is a simple, data sovereign, cost-effective solution that can scale as our customers grow their businesses in a cost-effective way. It's a unique offering in the Canadian market, and we've had an extremely positive response to date. We believe much of our success has been driven by OVH's solid reputation as a secure leader in cloud solutions. And we are thrilled to be working alongside OVH to bring secure cloud solutions to Canadian businesses. We look forward to continuing to grow our businesses together. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the OVH Summit. Great adventure we can develop with Rogers. Great adventure on the Canadian market. But now let's come back to the diversity of use cases of the digital. Well, normally it's in three phases. It's a bit like a child who starts as a child forging his personality, and then the teenager is going to develop and then go to the mature age where he can consolidate. We'll have the same thing, three-phase development in uh, the... And we can start with the foundation. I think we have to go fast, it must be easy, and just like for a child, you, you're surprised how fast you learn and conquer. And when you look at the company, it's, it become, what becomes the criterion number one is the speed of development on the market, the time to market. It's good to go fast. And it's either in an offensive mode, you have a genius idea, you have a great idea, you want to put it in the market as soon as possible to conquer the market. In other cases, you're in defensive mode, where you see a new competitor coming to the market and you have to react very, very quickly. Speed is the essential element of this construction phase. Then you have the development phase. It's a bit like the teenager with loads of ambitions and dreams, but needs to be supported to succeed. Well, the ambition in the company to develop in a continuous, sustainable way needs to be supported as well. And it needs to be supported in the digital economy by a global infrastructure that is secure. Let's take an example. One of the OVH's clients, Job Rapido, is now the world leader in his sector. Job Rapido is the first aggregator of job ads in the world. It's a success, a success that is so fast. Now, 70 million users today, 70 million users, you realize. Job Rapido had this uh, fast growth and chose OVH for flexibility infrastructures, world performance, and competitive costs. 70 million users now deployed in 58 countries. So we can see the importance of this development in a secure, high-performance way. If we look into uh, the next stage, we have built, developed, now is the stage of consolidation. When you are an adult and you want to valorize, consolidate your heritage, well, in the company, this consolidation phase appears with either cost reduction constraints or improving the service level or constraints of simplification of your legacy. Now, we need to take over control, rationalize, and faced with uh, challenges in terms of technology without spending all the capexes of the company. This is really, really complex and needs some expertise in transformation. Well, to talk about this, it is my pleasure to welcome Capgemini, our strategic partner, 
Today, represented by his CEO for Cloud Infrastructure in France and Director of the Country Board France. Christophe, please come to the stage. Well, Christophe, thank you for coming to this uh, summit. So, Capgemini is one of the leaders in the world, uh, European leaders, 200,000 employees, and then you have some really uh, complex situations. So, how does the externalization of IT and this legacy transformation? Well, good morning, and wow, for what we've seen so far, it's just enormous. Well, all our clients today are faced with this problem. They've got the legacy, they want to go to the cloud, and there's a high demand of cost reduction and flexibility, and also to master sovereignty for some of them. They want to go there to public cloud, but at their pace, with a link that is managed, secured, governed. So this is where we come into play. And for an integrator, in your job, you have to review your value for how does the integrated job of Kajimani uh, evolve? Well, all our strategy now is, is around the cloud first. And we chose a specific positioning, is that of integrated service. So we're going to have a layer of service integration, and our job in in optic or in a vision of satisfying customers is to integrate the best people in their market segment. This is what I'm here to, why I'm here today. And to do it with a vision of end-to-end -end commitment with one SLA quality delivered to clients. So from that point of view, OVH, with its specificity and the quality of the offer in the public cloud, you integrate what we call the uh, bus of service, and you are kind of uh, passengers and uh, co-pilots of this passenger bus. So where does OVH come into this? Uh, how can we help a giant company like Capgemini? Well, very clearly, <laughs> there is a great complementarity with what we've got to offer. OVH first, and I'm going to uh, of course, uh, make some praises now, if you allow me. But the flexibility of your offers, both in terms of technicity, sales, your expertise in the public cloud, but also in other areas that I imagine you are developing, the speed at which you can uh, provide a space, the absence of capex and the commitment to volumes makes it that you are really experts in your area. And there's an added advantage to that is that whether in Roubaix, Gravelines, or Strasbourg or Paris, we can localize, place data in France, which is very important for the finance, health, and a number of companies of national interest. They're really interested by that. And we are interested. And as far as Capgemini is concerned, our clients require that we have haute couture with experts like OVH, who is the expert in a top class ready to wear. And we try to do that. I have a last question for you. At OVH, we want to be very concrete. Where can we act on the short term? Well, sovereign cloud, as I said, the digital sector around IoT, mass data, big data as a service, and some uh, migration of emails, sovereign emails especially. But uh, when we have an offer of your quality, and then Kaibu Gemini with the first uh, ESN in France, I think it's uh, everything's open. So thank you, Christophe. Thank you, Cap Gemini. Thank you. It's a major step this year with this part strategic partnership, the first uh, player in services in Europe, developing with the first cloud, first European cloud stakeholder. I think together we'll go very far. I wanted to go back now. One year back, actually. Just one year ago, here, during the 2015 summit, I made an announcement. If you, remem if you remember, I announced the launch of a program to help startups. It's the 
digital launch patch program. In December, we uh, put into place the program, uh, put it online, have the uh, teams, and for nine months, we have welcomed a lot of startups, French, Spanish, American, other European countries. In total, it's over 400 active startups in this program, the digital launch pad, which is way more than what he imagined. It's only a start. Concretely, what does OVH provide to startups? How do we support them? Well, the best thing were they making a long speech and to ask them. So I asked three startups who are active in this program to come and witness. Mathieu Sacrisper from CEO Vintessence. Thank you, Mathieu. Marie communication manager for FE Pilot, and Christian Frisch, co founder and CTO of C Radar. Well, we're going to listen to Mathieu, Marie, and Christian, but you in this room, if you haven't put your smartphone away, I would like to have your opinion as well so you can interact with this discussion. We're going to talk about three themes, and for each theme, you have three choices. And your choice is going to help us to orientate the roadmap of the DLP program for the year to come. It's important because we're going to use it and see how important the priorities that uh, you are asking in this program. Let us start with the first step supporting construction, building the startup requires technical skills and infrastructure. So you're going to have three choices. So to help a startup developing, do you have to provide training and guides, support, advice from architects, or provide infrastructure for development? I'll let you answer. In the meantime, Mathieu, could you talk about the experience of Intersense in the DLP program? Well, thank you, Laurent. Well, the OVH program helped us migrate to the cloud faster. At Intersense, we offer connected maintenance solutions, so we use IoT to uh, monitor equipment in the industrial world with sensors and clouds to alert in case of problem. The infrastructure, we know how to do this. We want to concentrate on our core business. So the cloud of OVH provided more flexibility, more responsiveness to provide more value to our clients. For example, before we took, we used to take a few hours to offer a solution. Today, it's a few minutes or a few seconds using your API. We also, it also provides scalability, and we can easily implement some temporary environment for pre-production. So it's a real uh, save, save time-saving operation, and we can have get to our customers more quickly. So we've doubled. Now we've got a one million, over one million uh, sales, and OVH uh, contributed to it. And Laurent talking about today with my teams and the, the couple of services that you offer that could be of good use to them. Thank you, Mathieu. We have a great experience of a company doubling its sales within one year of a company giving a better quality service to its clients from a few hours to a few seconds and a very promising agenda, so really uh, good uh, testimony. What was your choice on the three possibilities? Obviously, two uh, main points on support provided by architects who help build because it's complex, and providing infrastructure. These are two issues on which we have invested. So we take this input to go even further for infrastructure and with the help of architects. Let's now move on to the second step. Now, the company is built, you have to develop on your market. Uh, once again, you could think about different tools, different resources to support that development to go to the market. We have three choices. Either we're going to see them on the screen, easier access to incubators and accelerators, helping with communication to give added visibility to on tweets and press reviews or others, or provide visibility and introductions in the ecosystem, especially through the world tours that we do in a number of cities in the world. While you answer these questions, Marie, if you could join the program about eight months ago, if I'm not mistaken, what is your experience? 
Well, thank you, Laurent. I'm so happy to be here today to talk about DLP and FE Pilot. FE Pilot is a software publisher specialized in energy efficiency of company and collective buildings. Thanks to DLP, we could validate our infrastructure and make our model scalable. What does, what does this mean? First, DLP, we benefited from expert advice from OVH to prove our infrastructure, validate it, and above all, to test out the latest OVH technology, especially the public cloud. Then, Laurent, you were talking about the OVH World too. We have benefited, and we took a part of that, and it has really boosted our exposure and our brand awareness with the public, the media, and especially thank you for all the articles and the tweets. And finally, DLP is also an access to an ecosystem. A real partnership together is actually it works. And so thank you, OVH, for that. It's really top quality. And I encourage the startups in this room to join the DLP. Thank you, Marie, for your testimonial. Interesting how FE Pilot, uh, with the strong dynamics, the first uh, core developed very quickly. We contributed to it, but of course the team has a great energy, and you'll go very far with that. Let's have a look at the answers you provided. There are two themes that actually stand out to be more visible in the ecosystem and give you access to conferences and also to incubators. And we are not an incubators, we are not accelerators, but we've developed a real specialists on French tech. Axel couldn't develop it at all, but we work with the French tech outside France with structures, and these are topics on which you can ask us. Thank you for this input, and we're going to continue in that direction. Now, let's move on to the third step. We have a solution which has been developed, develops on the market, and now the startup would like to develop it worldwide. There are no borders. Digital sector is a world sector. So three options to help this stage of development of the solution from the startup. Review the architecture to make it scalable, to face enormous growth, or expose it to the marketplace, or provide expertise in SEO or strategic marketing. Once again, I invite you to answer this question, make a choice, what is most important for you. And in the meantime, I wanted to hear Christian from uh, the CEO of uh, C-Radar, which and his experience is very important. Why well, C-Radar helps companies who sell to other companies to know their market very finely, to be able to identify partners and to find the future clients with machine learning algorithm. We asked, we asked the 1.5 million Belgian companies for the Belgian Post and uh, also for uh, delivery of parcels. When we signed the first international contracts, we had the true change of scaling. We didn't have to incise 4 million French companies, but tens of millions of companies located in Europe or in the States. This is how we met the architects of OVH. We worked with them on architecture that could support large volumes of data. So we implemented an infrastructure that is hybrid with dedicated servers and a series of service clouds, cloud services on the Docker. And through this elasticity, we can cope with big peaks of loading and analyze large volumes of data in real time. So today, C Radar analyzes companies in 20 countries, we are becoming one of the major leaders of B2B predictive marketing in the world. And one of the recipes of our success is infrastructure and OVH. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Another disruptive, innovating idea that addresses a market is going to be a leader, so a great future for C Radar. Now, let's have a look at uh, question and answers, rather. The 
scalable architecture is a true issue. You need to iterate and you need to start with a simple, fast development and then there comes the uh, volume and the key element in this uh, deployment. And through the examples, you've seen the importance of going from hours to minutes to seconds to deliver services to clients through architecture. We will integrate all this input. You'll see an announcements in the DLP and offers in support. Thank you for this feedback and this input. It's going to guide our roadmap 2017. You've seen three nuggets that are becoming leaders on the market. We have 400 in this program, over 400, and it's only a start. We have only we only started nine months ago. There is a booth in the Doc Eiffel next door. There's about 10, a dozen startups who can share the experience with you. And for those who just want to register, go to ovh.com in the program, and you just register. That's it. Thank you, Mathieu, Marie, and Christian. So, whether you are a startup or whether you a seasoned, confirmed, experimented digital company, you, a lot of you asked us to upgrade our marketplace. You've seen that in the choice of the development, this is an element that is there but hasn't been seen as attractive and dynamic to meet your requirements. So, a lot of people have asked us to upgrade that. Well. We have heard you, and it is my pleasure to announce the launch of a new marketplace, the OVH Together marketplace. And this marketplace is your marketplace. You can expose your solutions on the OVH portal. How many of you have developed solutions, innovative, disruptive, solutions that are complementary to the OVH infrastructures. Well, progressively, the OVH uh, Together Marketplace will welcome hundreds and thousands of solutions that we'll be able to expose to the million, millions of clients of OVH to the world. So it's a growth lever that is really significant. Now, the question now is, how will visitors find their way in those millions of solutions? How will potential uh, clients find the right solution for his or her specific needs. Well, to link these two words, we made a choice to integrate the Algolia search engine. You may not know Algolia, but you're going to hear a lot about this nugget directed by French people who are making a way in the States and in France. It's also an OVH client, a true alternative in the world of search engine. So we are very happy about this uh, Algolia partnership to support make easier access to the solution that meets your requirements. But concretely, how can the marketplace, how does this work? How much is it going to cost? To register, this is very easy. Starting today, you go to ovh.com to the program section. You, all you need is, have is to be an OVH client and register your solution to be eligible to the marketplace. Then there's the cost. For those who are familiar with marketplaces, the choice we made is very easy. It's free, free of charge, no fees, no costs. We're not going to count the clicks to know how many visitors have come. The business model is very easy and a virtuous circle. You are an OVH client. Your infrastructures are OVH infrastructures, so you can expose on a marketplace, and your success becomes our success. The more you have growth, the more you will consume infrastructures. We have the same interests. It's very simple, and it's unique on the market. So this marketplace is available. Speak about it. Talk about it. All OVH clients can register, and I invite you to do that as quickly as possible. I'm now going to come back on what happened this summer in August. In August, Octave sent you this tweet, which announced our five-year roadmap and the announcement of funds with minority uh, shareholders. This appeared through a tweet. Well, let's have a closer look at it. 
Let us see why it's important for you. For 16 years, we've developed a trust relationship. This relationship is based on listening, understanding your requirements, and meeting your requirement fast. And it is within that context that we needed to make this roadmap and act on levying funds. And to talk about it, it is my pleasure to welcome Nicola Wey, our finance director, who has steered the whole funds levying. Well, good morning, everyone. Let me introduce myself. I'm Nicolas Boyer. I'm the finance director for OVH. Yes, the one who doesn't encode. <laughs> and we've just prodded something that's important for the finance department. We have included some investors into the capital of the group. So you're going to ask me why? Why would a family company like OVH, it's always finance, its growth with alone or with the bankers, why has OVH decided to invite external investors? Well, I would summarize it in one word, speed. Well, actually, speeding up, because speed has always been a session for us, but this fund levying is going to help us go even faster. When we asked you about your expectations, you said more infrastructure, more innovating products, more services dedicated to professionals and companies, more data centers in more locations, and a even higher performance network. So we heard you, and we translated all the expectations into an investment plan of 1.5 billion. Yes, you heard it right, 1.5 billion investments in the year to come. So, naturally, we went out to get the best partners to help us finance this plan, but also realize, execute it. And I must say that for once, we took our time. We had strict criteria. Partners who could understand what we call the equity story of OVH. What is the equity story? Well, it is the DNA of OVH. It's growth, the culture of innovation. Because as you know, as you've been working with us for some time now, we are not like any others. We are different, and we like cultivating that difference. Partners who could support us internationally, especially in the new locations like Asia and the United States. And finally, a very important criterion, cool partners, because we are cool at OVH. So we are working every day, working hard to uh, be a world giant of IS, but in teams. So the pressure working together with you, our clients, our employees, colleagues, and suppliers. So it was important for us that our new shareholders could be included in that team. And this is why it is my pleasure to introduce Jean-Pierre Said and Karim Saadi from the Kaker and Taubuk Fund. So, morning, Karim and Jean-Pierre. I have three simple questions for you. And the first one is for you, Karim. Why investing into OVH? Well, as you know, we've had a great work of due diligence. It was painful, uh, painstaking. Some of you suffered from it. There are three, three points that actually stand out and make it OVH an exceptional company. The first one is that it is customer-centered company. Second point is the open and flexible approach of the company. And the third point is that it's a company that's going to be unbeatable in price and quality. In the customer-centric uh, aspect that we mentioned earlier, it is really the DNA of the group. And we could feel that in the due diligence, the customer is at the heart of everything. OVH, it's a 
company knows its place in the market, wants to be the cloud infrastructure leader in the world, which is today in Europe, and does want to go vertical or develop into services. So the partners, the clients, and some of you are here today, like including Cape Gemini, and these clients and partners can trust them. And then you have the open and flexible aspect. The major players on this sector develop products, and OVH develop offers. That's a structure and choice. And the developing product is what I have made a product. Now you have it work in your business. OVH goes the other way and says, explain to me your business, and we'll try and adapt to it. And listening to customers like this, in addition to trust, is very important. And the third point that I mentioned is unbeatable. And you were talking about the DNA of OVH. We could feel that it is integrated in the DNA of the company to be unbeatable in terms of quality, but price as well. And it's very important to offer the best quality and the best price is to clients. And when you have these three elements, and we know that as investors, it's normally a guarantee of quality. Now, let's talk about the DNA to, as a newcomer to the uh, OVH family. What do you take away from? First of all, the uh, OVH DNA is very complex, and we learned that during our long discussions and our work together. But I'd like to say, first, this is a technology, people. It is within your DNA. It's innovation at all levels, and it's also a engineering quality finding Workarounds, as Octave says, nothing is impossible. So that's very important. And also a passion. You all have a passion for what you do. You cannot build such success without having passion. First, passion for your clients, but also in what you do. And the work you do, uh, days and nights, finding solutions for your clients is very important. And the third aspect is as Karim said, the client is, the, is at the heart of everything, but also a culture of doing things right, be conscientious, and uh, do some good for employees and partners, and especially for clients. So from my job, I've been meeting a lot of technology companies in Europe, and this DNA is very rare. This is why we're here today. This is why we are so happy to support you in this adventure, and we are very happy to be here today. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. And finally, last question. So I mentioned it earlier. I said it was something that was important for us, but we'd like to hear you on this. Are you cool people? Well, finance, finance person and cool people are, don't go together. But as far as finance people are concerned, we are cool people, yes. But you should understand that as a finance director. Thank you, Jean-Pierre and Carol, and welcome to OVH. Well, stay here. I'd like to share a few words with you. We get to the first part of the, the end of the first part because I could not finish on the theme and to come back on the essential term is together. But I don't know, for me, together it makes me think of parting, don't you think? Well, let's take some time where we have reasons to celebrate. We've now gone over one million uh, customers. We have shareholders on board now. OK, party, music, lights. And then goodies.
Thank you for trusting us. And now let's go ahead. Alex, are you here? Alex. Alex. Ah, Alex. Well, good morning, everyone. I asked Alex to talk about the future of the digital sector. So it's a bit difficult after this party, but are you ready to talk about the future? I mean, what a welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you later. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. And especially, I have a big news to tell you, a uh, great news. The competition is going to disappear. What is competition? I mean, I mean, let's wait, wait. Competition is when a large number of people fight with limited resources to have the biggest share of a pie that is also limited. And what if, in spite, instead of being competitors, we were something else, what if the resources became unlimited? What if the pie would become enormous? This is what we're going to see together. First, let's talk about competitors. Today, together doesn't necessarily mean against the others. It could be something completely different. And then at the 1st of January next year, there will be 100 and, uh, 180 million startups, sorry, tech startups, 180 million non-technology startups that are going to massively use technology. Now, if these 180 million startups are your competitors, it's going to become very complicated. So let's have a look at how we can work differently. When? We can talk about all those startups. How many are going to be major successes? How many will we have new unicorns? How many mega startups out of this 180 million? Well, we don't have to worry too much. Some people say, yes, but Uber comes to a market. There's no room for the others. Well, actually, it's not true. Why? Well, because let's take this example of Uber. They have double the world market for taxis and open the way for other companies to take advantage of that opportunity. And today, what have we seen? In the right direction, we've seen companies that have come to the market to Uberize Uber. Another alternative that's appearing in the market is the opportunity of going international. And that is something that is very important for you. And if you still have your telephone on you, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you consider, for you, going international as a priority, important, necessary but not that important, currently being studied or not at all applicable to your business? So I'd let, give you time to answer this question. I think we might have it displayed on the screen, maybe. Now, let's wait for results. Well, there we go. Ah, these are the elements. So important, a priority, so it's 3%, nearly 70% for whom the going international is very important. And it is the case, actually. Why? Because for companies, going international is at the core. More than half the companies who are being created go international six months after creation. And there's something completely new, is where are the opportunities? In the IT markets, the most part of the growth is going to be in the southern hemisphere. And that is something that we were not used to. Another point is how do we go there? How do we take advantage of this, of going international? Well, this is something new. Before going international was being supported as a delegation to discover new countries with neighbors that didn't have much to do with us. 
Today's changed completely. You have some managers of various countries who come to Europe to see our startup and say, I know the market, there is a requirement, it is that requirement. I would like to assemble the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that together are going to meet the requirement of that market. It's called collaborative exports. And it does change things, startups working together to conquer the world. Now, I've been talking a lot about startups. Now, what about established companies? What about SMEs? Those average-sized companies, the larger companies? Well, actually, how can they take advantage of that opportunity and learn how to talk with the new world and new technologies and all the startups around it? Now, of course, when you are an established company and you see the startups on your market, coming to your market, at first, you find it cute and nice, but very quickly, it could multiply and be totally uncontrollable. It may happen, but be reassured if you're on the other side, if you're a startup facing you and you see an established company on the market coming to see you, let's be friends. This is how they see you. And once again, it could be scary. So the question is the following. How do we manage to have a dialogue between different size companies that are more or less mature on the sector to create value together? Well, there was a quote from uh, the uh, boss of IKEA who says, if you're a large company, you're going to die and you must accept it. Now, it's quite horrible, actually. Well, you should know that, well, I'd like to say something else. If you're an established company or a larger company, you have the opportunity to reinvent yourself and be reborn differently. Well, by changing your organization in an organism. What is an organism? Well, it's a set of cells that are extremely agile, teams that work on one topic and can specialize and be extremely good, extremely flexible. And those little cells work better with the rest of the company together, and they are of an adapted size to discuss to the outside cells, the startups, the other initiatives. And why not? The internal cells on the inside, on the outside, create new structures, new organisms. This exchange, mutual exchange, reciprocal and beneficial, we didn't invent it. It exists in nature. It's called symbiosis. So we have just seen together that there are new ways of working together to take advantage of opportunities that are offered to us. Great. Now, I'll do talk about another element of our story here. What about the size of the pie? Let's, it, let's look at it from a, with a higher view. I mean, for some time now, We've heard about the third wave, about the fourth industrial revolution, the digital revolution. Ah, great. I mean, it could be scary as well. But has everything changed? Truly, are things different now? If you look at all the inventions that have made the 20th century, car, planes, batteries, radios, cinema, all these inventions have made up the 20th century, creating value, creating jobs, creating, with industrialization, have entered in all houses and companies. But 90% of the inventions that have made the 20th century were invented in the last 30 years of the previous century. For 30 years, what happened? Between 1860 and 1900, an incredible period of ideas and imagination. For 30 years, we first had ideas and invented concepts. And then we had the second period, the period of implementation, where we innovated. When you take an idea and implement it, this is when you innovate. We didn't talk about startups at the time, but the idea was there. But it took one century, a full century, 
to have the opportunity, and that this opportunity is transformed into value, goes into every house and every company, which is the deployment and the continuous improvement. And at the end of the day, where do we stand today? We're being told that we're going twice, four times faster, but what have we just experienced? We've had an incredible period which is similar in terms of innovation. Why is that? Well, actually, we realized that between 2014, for 15 years, we developed fundamental bricks cloud, web, mobility, IoT, artificial intelligence, about 20 bricks from which we said there was potential there. And then, for two years, we realized that we have an overdose of bricks. I mean, the toolbox is full. So we're thinking of that. What am I going to do with all this? There's so many possibilities opening. What, am I, what will I be able to do? And then we see the first constructions, the first actual solutions made from this technology. And then we say, ah, it's great, it's a digital revolution. Well, actually, it isn't. We are just in a period that I would call the discovery, digital discovery, the awareness of digital sector. But the reality is what's expecting us now for the future. This is now in 2017, in a few months from now, it's year one of digital absorption. And it's going to last about 20 to 25 years. How do we see this? It's because suddenly the technology doesn't belong to technicians. The jobs, the businesses to appropriate it. You hear about platform, the people in a job, grouping technology and saying, now nah, that could be useful to me. How do you use this technology? And they see how they can assemble the bricks and say, we could completely reinvent our job, our business. We can change everything. This is what is happening. And it's called health stake. Health tech, farm tech, fintech, retail tech, supply tech, even aid tech. And that last in education, ed tech, the challenge is just enormous because, yes, there will be 5 million jobs destroyed very soon. With the same space of time, 5 million qualified jobs in which we'll have to switch people to. The challenge for education is just monstrous as for all the rest. We have to reinvent all the worlds. Actually, when you look today at those markets that are ours, the cloud market, the web market, it's two worlds meeting, companies, private individuals, and this new technology. And as I speak, it represents a market of 10 billions of dollars every year. But what's going to happen in the next 25 years, starting now with the sectors, is that all activity sectors will need this transformation. They will need all the companies facing them, advice, solutions, infrastructure, only together can we face this new market. Within a few years, it's going to go from a few dozen to 4,500 billion a year, be the biggest IT market, and it's ahead of us. And we only, there's only one way to answer that, is together. So, to see how our partners see this challenge in front of us, I went and asked them, and I let you see this. Paris, mais cette fois au centre Pompidou. J'ai donné rendez-vous à nos partenaires Intel, Microsoft et Cisco pour partager ensemble notre vision de l'innovation et des tendances. L'innovation est partout aujourd'hui. On dit même que c'est une condition de survie pour pas mal d'entreprises. Alors je me demandais quelle était votre vision de l'innovation Alors l'innovation pour Microsoft, et comme le dit notre nouveau CEO Satya Nadella, c'est donner la possibilité à chaque individu et chaque organisation de réaliser son potentiel et donc de faire plus et de, et de donner plus. Notre vision de l'innovation, c'est véritablement la capacité à aller créer et rechercher de la valeur. Chez Intel, notre vision de l'innovation, c'est d'accélérer les transitions technologiques. 
Ce que l'on anticipe, c'est qu'il va y avoir des milliers de clouds qui vont délivrer des millions de services à des milliards de périphériques connectés. Nous avons défini une vision qui s'appelle le SDI, Software Defined Infrastructure. Et cette vision du SDI, c'est de pouvoir fournir des couches hardware, que ce soit au niveau processeur, au niveau réseau, au niveau stockage, euh, qui vont pouvoir être entièrement provisionnés ou déprovisionnés, et donc de pouvoir permettre euh, d'orchestrer de manière 100% logicielle ces couches hardware. Très important d'innover aujourd'hui dans un monde qui se transforme énormément, transformation numérique très rapide, et on voit aujourd'hui que n'importe quelle société peut arriver et casser les codes d'une industrie, on a des exemples très clairs, et la fameuse ubérisation que, que tout le monde connaît. Et pour nous, la démarche d'innovation, elle doit véritablement permettre d'aller déverrouiller ces gisements de valeur qui vont profiter à tout le monde. À l'heure de la transformation digitale, toutes les entreprises, toutes les start-up aux grands groupes, vont avoir à relever de grands défis. Pour vous, c'est quoi les défis majeurs qui vont arriver dans les mois à venir Le premier sujet pour les entreprises, c'est de réinventer les usages, les usages en termes de collaboration euh, et les usages en termes de connaissance des clients. Donc là, on est vraiment sur les aspects euh, euh, façon de travailler, gagner de la productivité, gagner de l'agilité, réseau social d'entreprise. Et puis euh, tout ce qui est euh, relation client, comment mieux connaître ses clients, comment capturer plus d'informations, comment les analyser, comment rendre des services plus innovants euh, à ses clients. Donc ça, ça passe par des solutions dans le cloud. Je pense qu'il va y avoir deux types de challenges. Le premier va être au niveau de la quantité de données qui va être nécessaire d'ingurgiter et de traiter. Et la deuxième va traiter de l'intelligence artificielle. Euh, on estime que d'ici à 2020, une voiture connectée va générer à peu près 4 Teraoctets de données par jour. Un avion va générer 40 Teraoctets de données par jour. Et une usine connectée va générer 1 pétaoctet de données par jour. Alors je pense qu'un des grands défis pour nos clients, c'est de résister à la tentation d'essayer de développer l'ensemble de la stack hardware, software, notamment au niveau IT, au niveau de digitalisation, et de se concentrer sur leur métier. Au niveau de ce qu'on appelle les couches PAS, SAS, c'est eux qui doivent les amener et qui, qui trouvent les bons partenaires, les meilleurs, pour travailler au niveau infrastructure. Quels sont les projets les plus marquants de votre roadmap Quelles technologies vont transformer le quotidien dans les mois à venir Chez Cisco, on peut s'attendre à avoir toujours plus de réseaux et toujours plus de bandes passantes. Donc oui, forcément, on travaille aujourd'hui au-delà de 100 gigs, 1 tera, le throughput, l'IO, il y en a encore beaucoup qui arrivent. Et il va falloir justement inventer des applications qui sont avec. Au-delà de ça, euh, cybersécurité, analytics, euh, application d'IPv6. Deux innovations technologiques sur la roadmap d'Intel. La première s'appelle 3D Crosspoint, une technologie qui est liée à tout ce qui va être mémoire flash. Ce qui est attendu avec 3D Crosspoint, ce sont des facteurs de x1000 en termes de rapidité par rapport à l'existant et de x1000 aussi par rapport à l'endurance de cette mémoire flash. La deuxième innovation, ça va être lié à tout ce qui va être processeur ou accélérateur de type FPGA. Donc en fait, ce sont des processeurs qui, vont, qui, qui sont reprogrammables. Les FPGA sont notamment utilisés pour tout ce qui va être analyse et traitement de photos ou euh, par exemple tout ce qui va être moteur de recherche euh, sémantique. Alors dans la roadmap de Microsoft, il y a pas mal d'innovations, l'interface homme machine, donc euh, par exemple HoloLens qui sont des casques de réalité virtuelle euh, augmentée. Euh, il y a Cortana, l'assistant personnel, qui permet là aussi euh, d'améliorer la façon de travailler au quotidien euh, avec son PC, euh, son téléphone, etc. En termes d'Azure, d'IoT, donc d'objets connectés pour pas prendre un nom barbare, mais tout ce qui est machine learning. Donc. Quelles sont les autres tendances que vous observez dans le monde, dans les entreprises et les différents secteurs comme la finance, la santé et quelles solutions comptez-vous leur apporter Ce que l'on est en train de voir à l'heure actuelle, c'est un mouvement de monétisation d'algorithmes, en tout cas le business algorithmique. Je pense qu'un exemple assez, assez flagrant et récent, c'est Tesla qui vend en option sur ses voitures le mode, le mode pilotage automatique. De par, de par ces algorithmes, ils sont capables de donner davantage d'intelligence à leur voiture. Euh, la donnée, c'est la nouvelle monnaie. Si vous n'avez pas de données, vous n'avez pas d'informations, celui qui possède le plus de données est celui qui a le, le plus de chances de réussite, je dirais, dans le monde actuel. Donc aujourd'hui, voilà, Microsoft propose, d'ailleurs avec OVH, qui est partenaire et, et revendeur de SQL, solution de base de données de Microsoft, des solutions pour vraiment euh, aller dans ce monde de machine learning, ce monde de données, et en tirer un bénéfice pour créer des nouveaux services. Il y a un nouveau format qui émerge, un nouveau mode de collaboration. Moi, je pense que c'est le mode de collaboration startup corporate des 10-15 ans à venir, où en fait, tout le monde se remet à travailler ensemble et se remet à créer de la valeur ensemble. Startup plus corporate, tous ensemble. Nous venons de voir We have just seen how our partners envisage that transformation, especially what they had in terms of ideas to boost 2017. It's my turn to make some forecasts, and it will be a 
the occasion Alors, to talk about resources. In 2017, to start with, I think you'll have to léger. want to travel léger, light. Léger. Traveling light was already getting rid of workstations, and now, thanks to VDI, you've taken your workstations into the cloud. Now, this year, you'll be tempted with the new processors coming to change, to move your game and calculation stations, and some of you will have a tier for putting to the best towers in the museum. Now, of course, we're going to talk about something that is fundamental, talking about uh, traveling light, is mobile. And mobile will be at the heart of your concerns with mobile as we know it. For two years ago, we, told, we said you had to be mobile compliant. Last year, or this year, we said you have to think mobile first. In 2017, you're going to think mobile only and develop mobile only because you're going to realize that like two thirds of the company have known nothing but the mobile phones and devices. It's going to structure your way of thinking. When you think about mobile, think about smartphones, tablets, but it's something else. Actually, you're going to travel with your images, and thanks to virtual reality and augmented reality, you will know that everywhere you can travel in space, in a world that exists, or virtual world. But in 2017, you'll have new newness in this. You're going to travel in time. Why? Because with this virtual reality, you're going to visit places as they were in the past, but also you're going to visit places as they will be in the future. This is the case for the Consult Me company, one of our clients. They took as a principle that they would imagine the house you will have and visit the house as it will be. But you can also visit your flat as it will be once renovated while the renovation hasn't started yet. It looks like some company programs on home decorating are going to be in trouble. But uh, mobility is not only images, it's also the rapport we have with interactions. We talked about towers, about images, but let's talk about the keyboard or the mouse, how you can re get rid of them. How can we have a better interaction with the machine? I've found it, and I've found this. Not bad, not bad. This is Harry Potter's magic wand. It's simple, it's intuitive, it's handheld. Our ancestors could use it. Well, I found this, and I found this last summer in the States. In, uh, there we go. I found it in the States in the Harry, Pork, Harry Potter theme park. And thanks to this wand, I could move things. Light, put the lights on, have a complete interaction with all the decors in the park in a very intuitive way. That is also mobility. It is also what we expect from mobility in 2017. Of course, behind all this, there is development. For those who were here last year, I was telling you in this very keynote, in 2016, everyone will develop. And everybody developed. It's so much so that they even uh, develop cabbage patches. You can actually encode the development of your home garden, vegetable garden. And now it's been accepted, but the development steers, pilots, everything that surrounds it. Development, as one of the partners said, development steers our infrastructures with software defined infrastructures. Now, development steers our network with a software defined network, SDN. And we can even drive anything with the APIs with software defined anything, SDX. For example, you have an e commerce. Uh, website, you have APIs to your call center, which has changed the queuing and the personnel, the way you answer directly from the website. Software defined call centers. Now, to software define anything, I have codes and then developers. And if, what if 
suddenly I would replace who codes, who encodes, and by who, by what uh, codes. If a machine offered you options, there would be a new error. That's the error of 2017 the machine learning driven anything. You're going to use the understanding of the data of your company and the fine understanding of the mechanisms that would impact the rest of your activity to trigger the operation of your activity. Well, it has already started in security with machine learning driven security. And then it's also applied in forecast with machine learning driven forecast. In 2015, we're talking about the big data. Even here, we talked a lot about the big data. So you have to collect your data. We're going to learn a lot of things about our clients, the way they work, our companies work. And in 2016, we said, some of you will start using machine learning, deep learning to have phenomena appear. Now, today, you'll be tempted in 2017 to forecast. You're going to be using this data to forecast the future because you want to anticipate. It is the case for this uh, company, Elotrip, one of our clients. This company is great, is that not only will you require where to buy some uh, flight tickets, they're going to tell you when to buy the cheapest tickets. And it makes a whole difference. From then on, you project into the future. Now talking about the future, do you remember him? No, it's not iRobot, but it's not far. It's the robot of the InMove company. And the InMove company offers a robot that you can entirely print out in 3D. Of course, you have to complement it with a couple of Arduino boards, some motors, a Kinect, and two cameras for the eyes. But once you've programmed it all, you have your new best friend for Christmas. Now, for some of you find this a bit too geeky, now this year you can here implement robots that are much more concrete and more pragmatic. Do you remember him? Wall E, a robot, yellow and black robot, told the story that in the close future it would just remove all the waste from the planet. You may remember him. Now, eight years later, this is Wall E. This robot is analyzing the structure of the wall, the materials, the best way of cutting them apart, putting them back into condition and using them to buy a factory from the old one. That's Wall E eight years later. Between Leonardo da Vinci and the helicopter, that required 450 years. Between Milius and trip to the moon, 60 years. Between Back to the Future and the flyboard, it took less than 30 years. And two years ago, we were wondering whether drones could take our shopping back home. There you go. So between Wally and this new Wally was less than eight years. So we are seeing time compression, so that today the time to market, the time of the idea are now we're talking months, not years anymore. This means that for those who are in this room today and those watching us, between the incredible ideas that they're going to have in 2017, the moment you're going to have the idea, is actually all this, most of the major ideas are going to realize you haven't seen them yet. And to go fast when you've got your prototype, your idea, you need some resources to roll out, deploy. And there's a key word this year. Deploy, we're going to talk about demultiplication. What is demultiplication? Well, at OVH, these are, for example, servers that deploy servers everywhere in the world. We talk about code. You now have algorithms that code algorithms. In terms of robotics, you have robots that learn how to uh, make other robots. Another example in 3D printing, you have 3D printers that make up 3D printers. It's the case for Dagoma, and I think they're here. Gautier here? 
I'd like you to give a round of applause, Gauthier from the Dagoma Company. You okay? Now, who have used 3D printing? Raise your hand. Those who would like to use or discover 3D printing or have tests this year, stand up, stand up. Those who want to try 3D printing today. Okay. Right. Gauthier, these are your clients. <laughs> clients? Gauthier, Gauthier, clients. With the contraction of time and the demultiplication resources, you'll need less and less people to succeed. You don't need to be 200. Three people are enough. Three people known as the good, the bad, and the ugly. We know them sometimes. They're called DevOps or business experts and marketing people. I won't tell you who is who. With three people, you can really make major changes. Let's take the example. Two companies, the first one are custom clients in Lille, they call Selenis. They have developed a concept that allows to produce human cells in 3D. The other company called Poetis were the first in Bordeaux to actually 3D print human cells. In both cases, there's an enormous market, no real competition, but a challenge, an emulation, and both are changing the world. And to change the world, they did that in less than one year. Selenis developed in less than one year a catalog of 42 types of tumors for uh, research to be able to work on that immediately. Changes are there. At the end of the day, what are we going to see? We don't need to be that many people. Together doesn't necessarily mean means a little or a lot, but it means with a passion. Today, we are experiencing an incredible world where value will not be only in the APIs, but in the algorithm. The value will not be only in 3D printing. It will be in the plans of 3D printing. The value will be found in creativity, the printing, the plans, the ideas, and that value is the values, and the values are unlimited. As ideas are unlimited, you can imagine something different. But these ideas that are the new value in the area of online music and open source, we have to find a way to reinvent the world, to put them at the heart of our system. This is why today, I suggest one thing. In, that, in a world where we no longer need to be competitors, where we can be partners, where resources are unlimited, where the pie is becoming enormous, what I suggest now is that this year, for some time, we just put to the side the society of competition to build together the society of creativity. Thank you for your attention. If there's one man that embodies creativity at the heart of OVH, if he's got energy, who has been impatient for a few days to present all the solutions to take advantage of these opportunities of tomorrow, it is Octave Klaba, ladies and gentlemen, big and enormous round of applause to Octave Klaba. Good morning. Good morning. Since I've done the ovation, I couldn't see it from the client's point of view. Well, it's not bad. It's not bad. Not bad at all. It lacks a bit of technical announcements. Well, before we talk about uh, techs, I'd just like to come back to the theme of our summit together. Of course, it means together means all together we work for you. Together is you working with us. 
It means, including at OVH, we're working as a team together. And to understand this relationship, the best question you can ask is the question of why. Why? Of course, the question is the how and the who and what are really important questions. But to really work together, we need to understand the motivation of everyone. And to do that, ask the question of the why. I remember this uh, English client, Yellow Dog, they called. They're using a public cloud, but not the same way as the other clients do. A lot of instances for a few hours, but not every day. That's strange. One not every day. Well, we contacted him and we talked to him. And we have imagined a new commercial offer specially dedicating for his requirements. And there was a question that has been intriguing me for some time, is why would a happy customer alleviate could take the decision of leaving? Why? Well, when you ask this question very often, you have answers like, my clients are in Asia. I am relocating to the Silicon Valley. I need a data center in Germany. What is the common point between all these answers? World presence, global presence, and I'll come back to that. Since I've been doing this job, nearly 20 years, wow, I've seen a pattern of evolution for all the projects. Your project, our project, generally we have three uh, three stages. Laurent talked about it from a business point of view. From a technical point of view, I talk about the POC, scale-out, and consolidation. All the announcements we're going to make today are oriented, organized along these three themes. Because the requirement is not the same. When you are in a proof of concept, what is important is speed. I have an idea in mind, and you want to validate or invalidate it. This is why at OVH we work on a series of services based on the standards you can use very simply with just the API and the manager. If you are in that phase of evolution, we now have announcements for you. We we'll talk about the cloud, we we'll talk about mobile, and I come back to that. And once you've done your POF proof concept, your POC, you know there is a market. And what is next? Scale out. It is a stage that we know a lot about at OVH. You are growing, you are growing and growing again. How, do, how much does your infrastructure cost? It's not the first question you ask. What counts is to take market shares. If you are in that exciting phase of evolution, we also have announcements for you today. And after a scale-out phase, you are starting to control your growth. You're starting to know how much infrastructure you need. You will need tomorrow, next week, or in a month. And very naturally, you start optimizing and getting out of the public cloud only. This is the consolidation phase. Major groups know a lot about that. And if you are in that phase, today we also have announcements for you. That's it. This is what we've prodded over the last 12 months and what we're going to do in the next months, in the next 12 months. I talked to you about the proof concept, this 
famous stage where it goes fast, you're fiddling. When you develop a mobile application, you have on one side the developers, Android, iOS developers, and on the other side, DevOps, DevOps for backends. The point is to interconnect your mobile application to the backends, to take advantage of all the resources and the storage and calculation process, uh, power of the cloud. But the back end, it's boring. It's long. For those who've done it, you know that it could take up to three to four weeks just for the back end. And as the English said, it can become a pain in the ass very quickly. This is why at OVH, after web hosting, after telecom, after, telecom, after, the, cloud, after the cloud, we are starting a new universe, a new department that we're going to call mobile hosting. Now, what are we talking about here? With mobile hosting, rather than spending three to four weeks to create your backend, you're just going to take three to four hours. Cool, isn't it? So how can this be? Where before, how do you make your backends? You take virtual machines, you install a batch, Nginx, Docker, MongoDB, modification. And during that time, you don't develop your application. With mobile hosting, you will have all you need to create your backend with just the API or the manager and in a few hours. And we start with several services. First, the data platform. Data platform logs. Data platform logs based on Elasticsearch, where you can record and store and work on your logs. Data platform metrics to uh, store the metrics that come from your application, but also metrics that come from IoT sensors. And then we talked about OVH containers that help you orchestrate your dockers. Today with Marathon, with Swan and Kubernetes. And then we talk about message queues. We rely on Apache Kafka that manages several hundred millions of messages a second. And then we talk about compute of databases coming. We're going to offer notifications, authentication, API gateways, and of course, SDKs. This is why later in the year we're going to group all these services as a pack in a flat rate mode so you can speed up in this first phase of evolution. Roughly, in mobile hosting, you're going to find all the services serverless and platform for VH. This year, we came out with a new offer that is a VDI offer that we call Cloud Desktop. What is VDI? Virtual Desktop Interface. This is about your virtual desk, your workstation in the cloud. And we have a great success with that offer. I'm not surprised because technology is just great. We use VMware's Horizon to connect them to your workstation from any device. So the requirement in tools for teleworking is just going through the roof. Where before you had to assemble the tools that didn't work together necessarily, Cloud Desktop now is just a major turn. Of course, you have your workstation, but also some collaborative points. You have Exchange, Excel Word. SharePoint, and then you have the antivirus, the backup for your employees is just great. But it's also great for integrators and, the, and uh, IT managers. 
Because for them, we have come out with a cloud desktop infrastructure, a true private cloud to manage VDIs as simply as virtual machines. No, virtual machines. Désolé. Oui. D'accord. Désolé. Et Sorry about that. Uh, and for those who are working data, in the big data, HPC, HPC et la 3D, 3D, cloud desktop, cloud desktop is particularly interesting. Pour eux, For them, vos équipes, your teams elles ont de have the impression that they work directly the into the data center. Et donc, il y a deux so there are two benefits to that. Premier, First is you can vous pouvez dans votre cloud load desktop into your cloud desktop some data that you've stored cloud. in the cloud. But above all, thanks to the network, the internal data center network, you can load this better data into the cloud very quickly. So, those that have graphic or video rendering with masses of information, and I'm talking about data scientists in this room, you know the power required to have those graphics. So we are working on the cloud desktop with GPU boards to speed up even more the calculation and the graphic rendering and do it in high quality. That is the power of the cloud. Last year, I presented an innovation, a new product. It's called Over the Box, OTB. When I had the feedbacks from clients, I was particularly proud of this innovation. But our clients are telling us we want simpler installation, we want more throughput, and we want over-the-box for a premium company, not expensive enough. So to simplify the installation and increase the speed and the throughput, we've worked on V2, OTB V2. It will have 14 1 giga ports, a real switch they can use with connecting each internet connection separately. So it will be the real plug and play. Thanks to the volume of sales that we have on OTB V1, we have reduced the price to buy it. And we continue working on the V3 for companies that we're going to develop during in the course of the year. And the last announcement for the proof concept concerns security. Security. It's sometimes complicated to install. It could be boring and even really, really expensive. And I don't think it's normal. The uh, seat belt is not an, extra, an optional extra in cars. So for some time now, at OVH, we've been working on generalizing SSL, generalization of the secure connection to your website. And to do that, we've had two issues to solve. The first one is the infrastructure. An infrastructure capable of hosting several tens of, of millions of SSL certificates and to manage up to one billion simultaneous connections. Now that's been prodded. And we had the second issue, which is the access to an SSL route that is simple and fast. So when Let's Encrypt project became public, we naturally became the part of this project. So the second issue, we fixed it as well. What does this mean? Today, OVH is 
securing 2.2 million websites. So that's done as well. What is the next step now? Well, the next step is we offer this technology to all other clients, even if you have VPS, even if you have private cloud, private cloud dedicated servers, and even if you are not at OVH, if you don't have your infrastructures at OVH, this is why SSL Gateway is free of charge by default. You can activate it with API and the manager, and then we change DNS, we activate this SSS certificates for all your domains automatically. And that's it. It's done. You have secured your websites. As an option, you can, can tell the uh, SSL EV, the green bar. You can have CDN, cache, uh, anti DDoS, IP load balancing, including in the VRAC. And of course, you can have a dedicated IP. These, are the these were the four announcements to help you speed up in the POC phase. These services are there to help you get the MVP and launch your startup. Thank you. Now, scale out. Scale out means we are rolling out. Scale-out means we are growing fast. Scale-out means worldwide. How can you be worldwide with only 17 data centers in two countries? You cannot. And 27 data centers. That's better, isn't it? And in 11 countries, now it's going to become interesting. It is my pleasure to announce that the network of VH is from now on going around the world, starting from Europe, through the Atlantic, going to the East Coast, through the States, the West Coast, then over the Pacific, through Singapore, and coming back to Europe through Marseille. On this, on this network, we connect 10 new data centers. We talk about Singapore, Australia, Poland, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, the UK, Spain, and of course the United States the West Coast and the East Coast. And today, it is a great pleasure to announce that three of these data centers are up. And where the others would have cut a red ribbon, we're going to do it the OVH way. We're going to ping them. These are the trace routes for Warsaw, Singapore, and the trace route for Sydney. Thank you, and kudos to the teams who have worked on this, really. And to let you discover these new destinations, these new data centers, we've worked on a discovery offer. A discovery offer based on dedicated servers, particularly interesting and limited in volume. Starting tomorrow, you'll be able to order in this two and deliver it within a few days. On the west coast of the United States, on the east coast, sorry, will be in Virginia. Not far from Washington, D.C., a few kilometers from Ashburn, the capital of the world capital of data centers. In a small city called Vint Hill, it's a small city. And for the anecdote, the governor himself, the governor of Virginia, Terry McAuliffe, who came to Roubaix. To Roubaix Valley. 
And told us, you guys, I want you to come to Virginia. I want you to come to Virginia. Now, wow. So we came to Virginia. The governor himself announced it last week. And he actually shot a short video that I'd like to share with you. Salut, active. Hello, Paris. Hello to everyone at the 2016 OVH Summit. I'm Terry McAuliffe, Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. We are very excited to have OVH set up shop here in Virginia. We are proud that the company will be part of our ongoing success in building a new Virginia economy. Virginia is a leading center for web hosting and technology. More than 70% of the world's internet traffic passes through OVH's new home in Northern Virginia. We are no stranger to the digital economy. One in every 10 Virginians works in the tech industry, one of the highest concentrations in the United States. We have worked hard to attract the best and brightest companies to our state, companies that are here to build their American dream. We welcome OVH to dream big with us. Enjoy the rest of the keynote. Au revoir. Thank you. Is that great, isn't it? Well, this is an example for the hosting of companies on the West Coast. Well, the West Coast now. <laughs> we have planned to start at the same time as on the East Coast. But we've had to face a totally unexpected competitor. It is the first time in my life that I'm in competition with marijuana producers. <laughs> As you may know, in certain states, in the west of the United States, the production and the growing of marijuana has been legalized. So all the major buildings with lots of installed energy have disappeared from the market. But we don't despair. We're going to start in early 2017. Let's come back to Europe. Between March and April 2017, we're going to start two new data centers, Germany and the UK. In Germany, we have 100 kilometers from Frankfurt, and in the UK, about a dozen kilometers from uh, city centers. In June, July 2017, we're going to have two new data centers, Italy and Spain. Then we're still prospecting. We have the choice of buildings, and we're going to make the choices and start working. At the end of uh, 2017, or probably earlier, we're going to start a new data centers in the, in the Netherlands. What does this mean for you? as clients. This means that you'll be able to use all the range of services everywhere in the world. This means that you'll be able to keep your habits with us and do the scale out in all our data centers. This means that you'll be able to benefit from the quality of our network, the support of options everywhere in the world, including where the bandwidth is out of out in the market in Asia. So follow our news and discover the exact dates of each data center and above all, the discovery offers, which are particularly interesting. And even better than following the news, why not go there? Why not go to the 10 cities where we are building 10 new data centers? There are 10 lucky winners today to win two tickets, return tickets, flight tickets, in the 10 cities where we have set up. I think it's on the right of uh, your armrest, maybe. We have one. Did Do we have winners? Do we have winners? Do we have winners? I think we have Australia located over there. The country of ACDC. 
And over there, we should have... We should have Germany somewhere there. Maybe we have a Rammstein number next year. Hybrid cloud. Cloud hybrid. Hybrid cloud now. Why do we have why do we have a hybrid cloud in the scale out? Because we are meeting clients who have developed internally on their own cloud, which is great. Only once into production, they don't have the capacity to scale it out, and not everywhere in the world. And before this situation was a kind of a hurdle for developing the company, so that's why I'm a big fan of hybrid cloud. What is this all about? With Vera Connect, Vera Connect, you can interconnect your internal cloud with OVH. So take advantage of VPS, private clouds, public cloud, and dedicated servers. Up to now, you know the offer dedicated connect. It is a con de connection dedicated between you and us. It's the best solution, especially if you need a lot of bandwidth. One giga, 10 gigas, 40 gigas. Today, I would like to announce a complementary service, VRACT, VRAC Easy Connect, which is the best solution if you need 200 megabytes to 1 gigabyte. If you are a client of Equinix Cloud Exchange, you're already connected to their platform. You can now extend this connection up to OVH. In the weeks to come, we're going to announce more partnerships with other data centers in the cloud. I like, to, I like this type of announcement. It shows that our openness, that we will never oblige you to use only OVH. So let's stay in the cloud, public cloud. We have had instances with ultra-fast storage locate, uh, based on local SSDs. We now have two ranges of CPU instances, EG and HG. What is the difference? HG is just a bomb because it's driven, boosted by 3.1 gigahertz instead of 2.4 for EG. We also launched VPSs with lots of RAM, and we are currently working on GPU instances. Of course, you get all these ranges and services, public services, in all our data centers, including the 10 new ones. The beginning of, of OVH was web hosting. For those who don't know, OVH means in French, we are hosting you, we host you in French. And it's also a Oles van Ersman, but that's another uh, story. I have an announcement to make to web hosting. We're going to have cloud web. Why? Because you've been asking us more performance to uh, host your websites, and we'll be able to provide that using the cloud. With the cloud web, you're going to uh, host as many websites as you want with a flat rate, and you'll be able to roll it out, create it everywhere in the world, including in our 10 new data centers. When this, you are in this phase of scale-out, you know how much stress and how much well, stress and excitement at the same time. That's my daily life. But now, to roll out, to deploy worldwide, you have more choice. You have all you can eat in the only European cloud provider. Before we continue, I have a fun announcement to make, and to do that, I have a fun announcement to make, sorry. And I need some help, I need Stéphane and Vincent to come to the stage. I asked them if they could make this announcement themselves in front of 2,000 people, and they said no. So I'm going to make it. 
And then I'm going to ask them to do what they do best. So what do they do? Any idea? Stéphane et Vincent are killing the baddies. And the baddies in code are bugs. This uh, summer, OVH launched down the bug bounty with a financial conversation for people to tell us about bugs in our system. If you find a small bug, you can win 50 euros, but if you find a major bug, you can win up to 10,000 euros. Thank you, Stéphane and Vincent. So, consolidation. Consolidation is when your proof concept has worked. You've launched a scale-out, and it's worked as well. Now, in spite of a few competitors, you've taken the market shares and you continue growing. But something has changed, and it's fundamental. Now, you are mastering your growth, and that changes it all. And that's, let's change it all. Tout naturellement, vous commencez à optimiser. And you're starting to optimize naturally. And you uh, factorize. At OVH, this stage is called consolidation. Now, of course, you continue using the public cloud. But more and more the private cloud, and especially dedicated servers. Why? I mean, maybe some people will not be, agree with me, but dedicated server is not dead. Why am I saying this? Because to grow very fast without looking at your budget, public cloud is great. But at one point, you will want to look at cost and budgets. At one point, you would like to optimize service. And there's nothing better than dedicated service to kill two birds with one stone. I'd like to take five minutes to tell you what's new in dedicated service. With lots of hyper-geek terms, there will be our geek moment. All of dedicated servers and all dedicated servers were connecting a new network, the management network. These management networks will help you have the hand on dedicated servers, whatever happens. So there are two benefits to this. For dedicated servers who just up to now had, been, had had the public connection to one cable, you're going to have a choice. You're going to be able to choose either to stay on the public network or choose the private. Network. So we are launching the first server only with the VRAC connection. And the second benefit is that for all servers connected to two cables, we're going to connect them to, three, to two twin switches. So you have the hyper-high ability connection. So very high redundant. We'll also give you the option, do you want just the private network, just the public network, or a mix of the two? And we've been working on dedicated servers with four connections to for even more availability. We now have a new server with loads of RAM, especially interesting, 512 giga, but also a new range of servers with four processors. Four processors, 72 cores, 144 threads, with one tera RAM. Any uh, two, two teras? Who? Any three? I can see three. Yes, up to three tera of RAM. 
dedicated service for in-memory databases like SAP, for example. This year, we're going to generalize the storage on NVMe in PCI Express cards. It, do you know that today the NVMe in PCI Express is up to 10 times faster than SSDs? And soon 15 to 20 times faster. Can I say that SSD is dead? Well, that's it for dedicated servers. Well, actually, it's not. Does FPGA mean anything to you? I know about the uh, logic programmable. So these are chips that you can actually program. You can run bits of code directly on the silicon and at the speed of the silicon. So loads of applications for that. For example, we use for anti-DDoS services. We are looking into this technology for SSL Gateway to compress the images and the text in real time very quickly. We are looking as well for checksum, lots of checksum in storage in big data. And big data, FPGAs are particularly interesting to execute algorithms for machine learning and deep learning at the speed of the silicon. 2017, in 2017, it will be the year of FPGAs, with the first process where FPGA will be integrated into that. In the meantime, you can test out this technology. We have the come out with the verbs on labs on run above with the PCI Express cards with FPGAs. It's really, really awesome. You should test it out. GPUs, I mean, we've talked about the public cloud instances with GPU on dedicated server. We have a full range of servers with all the GPU cards on the market. For those who've been using this technology, you know that this is a product that is particularly expensive. And it is my pleasure, really, it is my pleasure to have some feedback from our first clients using the GPU-equipped servers that tell us about the performance, the power that they get. And OVH is particularly competitive. Why will OVH be hyper-competitive on this GPU and FPGA market? It's two types of chips that use a lot of energy and create a lot of heat. So we have two benefits. With the water cooling technology, we can extract all this heat at a lower price. And when you extract this heat, it means also having more servers in less room and therefore reduce the hosting costs. This is why OVH is coming to the market of PGAs and GPUs with all the technology benefits already installed. So the uh, partnership with VMware and OVH has been going on for nearly seven years. Sometimes you ask me the question, why VMware? Why vSphere? Well, the, it's a very simple answer. vSphere is the software that is the most used for virtualization in Companies. And our role, our job, and I've told you, is to offer you market standards so that you keep your habits and so not to impose anything on you. For all those who have tried to connect uh, to the, uh, the earphones on the new iPhone 7, you know what I mean. The private cloud comes with lots of newness, thanks to vSphere 6. And like 
Uh, Jeb Patel, Senior Vice President at VMware, in charge of cloud providers, to tell you about the strategy of software defined data centers, SDDC. Ajay Patel, you have the floor. Bonjour. That's all the French I know. We're t delighted to be part of this OVH summit. More importantly, be part of the cool kids with OVH. The VMware strategy has always been about increasingly driving software-enabled data center technology. Our partnership with OVH is a long one. OVH in 2010 delivered vCenter as a service. Earlier this year, we worked together to deliver the full power of VMware SDDC, Software Defined Data Center, as a private cloud dedicated cloud service. It brings the best of VMware software in terms of vCenter, NSX, our software defined networking, vSAN, our virtualized storage, all packaged as a service. The key value proposition for customers has been about making it simple. How do I adopt all this innovation very quickly, very easily? Being able to deliver a full SCDC in 30 minutes, that's correct. All the power of VMware as a data center technology in 30 minutes is what OVH has delivered with this joint private cloud announcement. VMware's role in IT continues to be one of being able to provide and manage multiple clouds. Our customer surveys show two thirds of our install base expect to have multiple clouds in their future. We believe hybrid cloud and cross-cloud is the future of IT. Being able to seamlessly bridge your on-prem with your public cloud, as well as manage multiple clouds, is where the future lies. We've been phenomenally successful as a company virtualizing data center. We look to do the same in this multiple cloud world by providing a common operating environment of connecting multiple clouds. And a core part of our cloud strategy is our service providers, and OVH is a key partner in there. Congratulations to OVH on the Virginia announcement. We're looking for a global partnership while having a local partner who can meet the needs of our customers. So I'm excited to be here, and I look forward to working with OVH in driving cloud adoption, both with VMware technologies as well as connecting to multiple clouds. Thank you. Merci votre attention. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Before we conclude, a word on uh, telecoms. In the uh, consolidation phase, what is very important for you are costs. In telecoms, we are particularly well positioned in terms of value for money. And we're going to uh, continue on that. First, on web connection, we are working on the first FTTH offers for companies. In terms of VOIP, on VOIP, for our internal needs, we have developed a service that we call Context Center Solutions, Contact Center Solutions, and we use it for uh, the help desk. And we now offer this we offer this as a service, so you can easily manage the incoming, outgoing calls, queuing, recording of calls, and of course follow the activity 
in real time for major groups who have come out with dedicated exchange. And likewise, as we've done for Voice over IP, we have developed internally a platform, an infrastructure redundant with several data centers to offer you exchange by the unit. This technology, this infrastructure is offered in private, dedicated mode, totally isolated from other clients, up to 1 million exchange accounts by domain name. And the last announcements for this summit, there are two choices. Either you couldn't care less, or is going to change your life. Hosting of health data. For those who said yes in their mind, let's just explain to the others why it's a big, such a big deal. For those who've been working in e-health, you know that hosting data health data is really, really strictly regulated, regulated in France. And OVH will be accredited to host this data before the end of the year, probably in a few weeks. So we'll be able to offer you the private cloud, HDS, private cloud. You can actually order it already and work on the technology. It is in gamma mode, so this means that half price, so you can start playing with it. Uh, as soon as we got the seal that we are HGS approved, it goes into production. I've told you today about three stages of a project. The three stages in the evolution of a company. With the announcements I've made today, and every summit, I do it. Internally, we are looping on these three stages. And OVH has been growing and will continue growing. Today, there are 1,300 people. If there are 3,000 people, 5,000 employees, 10,000 employees, there are things and values that will not change. Innovation, passion, and transparency. When you say innovation, it means taking risks. And the bigger the company, the more we want to reduce the risk. Not in our case. For one year, a big dozen of people have been working on mobile hosting. And when the production this year is going to be 30 people. And the passion. You know that I have a passion for my job. I love my job. And I'm surrounded by all the people with a passion, like me, who are enhanced through the services that we offer. Transparency. Transparency means loads of things. But for us, it's a value. It's a value that tells us that we should share the information, even if it's not top for our image. I mean, OVH has grown in the movement to open source. If, if it were not for Linux, Apache, SourceForge, there would be no OVH. SourceForge. Ah, it's a few years back. Now, today is GitHub. Three years ago, I wrote an article about GitHub. It was a real mistake. <laughs> And it may have uh, shed uh, some doubt about our commitment to open source. When we developed over to be, we came out with open source. We have a number of other software this year. We are just about to have CDC, Continued Delivery Service. And before the end of this year, we're going to have the manager in open source, the manager that we have been recoding for two years. So you'll be able to download it, modify, install it, and use it at home. It could be just trivial, but it's very important for us.
OVH has been growing, but we do not forget where we come from. It is our commitment together. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And thank you for loyalty. And have a nice summit. Thank you again. Open the crowd screams out, screaming your name. Hope if everybody runs, you can sustain. Hope that you fall in love, and it hurts so bad.